Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown of All Fans. I'm your host, Bull. We're going to be breaking down my thoughts on spring practice 2024 for our Tennessee Volunteers. Day number two, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. So number one, we got to listen to Coach Tim Banks, who is our defensive coordinator, speak after the practice. We also got to listen to three of our true freshman secondary players, starting off with Adris Farouk. And he's talking a lot about the transition from high school to college, the speed of the game changes, and all three players echo these same sentiments. He also talks about just getting used to practicing in college. Boo Carter spoke. He talks about playing star, playing safety, offense, and special teams. And we already knew that he was going to be doing all of those things. He's going to get cross-trained everywhere because he's a do-it-all guy. He's a very special athlete. I actually really like him on defense at secondary a lot more than I thought I would. But now that I've seen him out there running around, you know, I think that he can definitely do it. We won't know for sure until those pads come on, though. But I still think that his biggest upside is going to be on offense. So it'll be interesting to see what types of packages Coach Heifel can put together for him uh, in that perspective. And Caleb Beasley spoke. And again, man, we talked about this yesterday. We have not spoke a whole lot about Caleb Beasley over the past few weeks leading up to spring practice. But he's a great, great option for us at cornerback. He's tall. He's long. He's thick. Uh, you know, he's the son of a coach. He's physical. And he talked about being the son of a coach and how that's kind of helped him to transition into college. Something that stood out to me for him was saying that, hey, I've kind of learned the playbook in these first couple of days. Now, I will say this. The playbooks on defense are not that complicated. It's not that intricate. But there are a few things that you do have to learn because you may end up changing your coverage based off of different formations. And if he means that he's gotten acclimated to the playbook in that sense, then that is very, very impressive. And whenever we're talking about these guys saying, hey, you know, the speed of the game has changed from high school to college. Yes, they are talking about the actual physical speed, but a lot of times it's more of the mental speed in processing things. So if he's able to process things on a high level, I think that he's got a really good chance to be able to be an early player for this team from the high school level to the SEC. Now I want to take a look at Eric Kane's depth chart that he saw today over there at VolQuest, and they got to see nine sessions of practice. So there's a lot of good notes. Now, as we're going through this, keep in mind, y'all, this is very, very early on. This is not going to be what the starting first, second, third string looks like by any means. It is going to change. And obviously, we have several players that are hurt that will be starters. So we're just going to talk about what this, you know, starting lineup means early on, what the second string lineup and third string lineups mean just early on in spring practice. All of my takeaways. Number one, like we talked about, Cooper Mays didn't get to practice that much today. OK, and I think that that was intentional. I think that the coaching staff wants to see Vice and Lang get some more reps because we did see Cooper go down last year, and especially, you know, in that Florida game, we saw how big of a difference that make. So we want to have a backup center that is a real true backup center. And I've heard several of the analysts talking about, hey, you know, we want to see Vice and Lang playing more at left guard because that's a position that there's a really big battle for right now. But I would say, honestly speaking, man, maybe put him over there on a very limited basis, but he needs to get most of his reps at center because we need at least two true centers just in case, God forbid, knock on wood, all that stuff. Cooper Mays does go down again at some point this season. So, you know, I really like that, that Vison is getting the opportunity to get some more reps. Now, over at right guard, we've got Jackson Lampley. We all know that he's there because Spraggs is out for all of spring. And Jackson is a guy that maybe he could benefit some more from putting over there at left guard. That's where he has an opportunity to start at. But it is good just to know that he can play either side. He could play a whole lot of different places on this offensive line. So I think he's fine from that perspective. He is still getting in reps. And we'll see how that left guard position battle kind of plays out throughout all of the offseason. Now, back to left guard. Uh, right now, we've got Dane Davis, who can pretty much be plug and play anywhere on this offensive line. He really should be our, um, you know, swing backup offensive tackle left or right side. And, uh, you know, it's good to see that he can kind of get plugged in there at left guard. Now, we'll say this about Dane Davis. I love the way that he looks so far. And obviously, it's very limited, uh, you know, amount of clips that we've got to see from him and everybody else. But he looks like he's taking a step forward. And sometimes that light just clicks on for players uh, at different times. And it seems like it's definitely clicked on for Dane Davis. Now, do you want him to start for you at left guard? Or do you want for him to be more of a guy that can be a backup for you at either one of the tackle positions or anywhere else on his offensive line? We'll see. I think that a lot of that will be based off of how well the other left guards end up playing and how much do we trust where we end up throwing over there. Now, Shamrod Umarov is a guy that we'll talk about here in just a second, but I really like him. Okay. I talked about him some yesterday. 
And yeah, his upper body looks a little thin to me. But at the same time, he's got a very strong lower half. And really in football, that's what makes all the difference, especially playing at guard. You've got to be able to kind of anchor down at that position. And he'll also have a lot of help with the center and with the tackle to be able to block guys on the inside. So I think that he can do that. I still really like Aiden Buss, so I'm not quite sure why he's not working over there on the left side. But at some point, I would anticipate that he will get that opportunity. Um, and obviously, we already know that Lance Hurd is an absolute and total dog. I love what I've been seeing from him on a very consistent basis. And it was really big to see him kind of coaching up Gage Ginther earlier today. Uh, you know, I think that that speaks volumes for him to be a new guy in our system. It just shows how mature he is as a player to come and say, hey, you know, this is what you need to do here. And he wants to help his team get better. So the more that I get to see him, the more I'm like, man, that was a huge pickup for us. Now, on to the second group, which is Jesse Perry starting at left tackle. Shamrod Umarov is at left guard. We just talked about him. William Satterwhite, who I absolutely love his film, uh, as a true freshman at center. Aiden Bustle at right guard, and then Trevor Duncan. Now, Trevor Duncan is a guy that was playing defensive line this past season. He made the transition over to uh, tackle, and we thought that he could. We thought that he would at some point. Happy to see that. I think he's listed about six foot six, 295 pounds. I haven't got to see him yet on film in practice. But, you know, I'm hoping that he can come along and, you know, maybe fight some of those other guys. I mean, iron sharp as iron. You can never have too much competition on your team. Now back to right guard at, uh, with Aiden Bustle, who, you know, I've told y'all several times I love him. And we just kind of touched on him. But he physically looks like a guard. I mean, that's what he looks like. I think that when we talk about Shamrod Umarov, who really looks more like a tackle, he's got those really long arms. And, you know, it doesn't mean he can't play guard. But he just, to me, I feel like he could probably help us out a little bit more at tackle but we'll see how that whole thing plays out now William Satterwhite at center is critical because if he can really come along here early on then we can start to move guys like Vice Lang at some other positions some because you need to at least have two really good centers but if you want to have a really deep team if you have three or even four of them then I mean you're in a great position and I think that he's a guy that at least I would say after the first quarter of this season he will be a guy that we we'll probably trust to throw out there if we absolutely have to. He's just that good as far as I'm concerned. But again, we won't know until he's throwing those pads on up against SEC competition. And then, uh, you know, we've got Jesse Perry, who I think looks really good. He's very well put together. His footwork is great. His hands look great. He looks strong. He looks powerful. And I don't know who he's been working with over the summer, but he you know, is a three-star coming out of high school. I, he looks like he's improved dramatically. He's a guy that I would say keep a very close eye on him throughout the spring to be a guy that could be second or third string. I think that he's already in that mix, especially with how many injuries we've got uh, going on in spring. Now let's move on to the defensive line. The first group is James Pierce, Omar Norman Lott, Big O, Dominic Bailey at the strong side defensive end position. Group number two is Joshua Josephs at the Leo, Elijah Simmons, and Bryson Eason as your tackles. Tyree West is the strong side DN in that group. And then the third group is Caleb Herring, David Hobbs, Jackson Moy, and Jason Jenkins. Now, the first thing that jumps off of the uh, page to me on this is I don't see Tyree Wesby in this list. And again, it's very, very early on. But like we talked about, man, that group is very deep. I don't think that, that necessarily means that Tyree Wesby won't be winning that spot. I still think that he will at the end of the day. But he's got to come out and prove it. He's a guy that hasn't played a whole lot of football. Everyone else on that list, especially playing at the strong side defensive end, has played football for Tennessee. So that's probably why he is where he is at this point. But, I mean, you know, I think that that lineup looks really, really good. Now, as far as the starting uh, D tackles, will Omar Normalot be the starter or can Bryson Eason push for that spot? Can Elijah Simmons push for that spot? You know, I think that they're very, very close uh, as far as who can start right there next to Big O. As far as I'm concerned, Big O is definitely one of the starters. But, again, y'all, I mean, that's a really, really deep group. You know, I love what Caleb Herring has been showing us so far, Joshua Josephs is a player that the coaching staff has talked about. Is he looks physically, you know, very well put together, like he's ready to come out here and play football at a high level. And uh, you know, a guy like Jordan Ross coming in over the summer, he's not here right now, but over the summer, he's going to be pushing at that Leo position for sure. And I think that he could definitely get into that role. Oh, I think he will definitely get into the rotation, but he might be two or three on the depth chart whenever it's all said and done. But, you know, a whole lot of competition right there, and that's the deepest position group on this team. Again, I think it's as deep as it's been maybe since, like, the 90s. Um, and, yeah, I, I think that we are going to have a great defense 
solely just based off of that group alone. Now, on to the linebackers. The starting group so far has been Keenan Pilly, Kayla Perry. Second group has been Jeremiah T. Lander and Jalen Smith. Third group has been Ben Bolton and Edwin Spillman. Now, whenever we're talking about linebackers, we know that Arian Carter and um, Elijah Herring are both out right now. So how much is that group going to look different? How much is it going to change as we kind of get those guys back into it? And I don't know if they'll be back over the summer or if it's going to be, you know, in fall camp. I, you know, at some point they will be back. So does everything kind of change? This is good, though, because some of these younger guys are going to be able to get more reps and, uh, you know, we can see how they look. Now, this is another interesting point that Coach Banks made in his uh, in his post-practice press conference where he's talking about, or, you know, I guess he was asked about the linebackers. And the first two names that he mentioned was Jeremiah T. Lander and Jalen Smith, okay? So he was asked about the younger linebackers. Who's going to be starting next to Keenan Pilly? And they also, I think they were talking about Arian Carter. I couldn't hear a whole lot because it's hard to hear on uh, Vol Quest. They've got to get that audio fixed. But that was interesting to me because he mentioned Caleb Perry last, okay? So that lets us know that Caleb Perry is the last guy that he's thinking about, right? And I know that he didn't intentionally do that, but I still think that Jeremiah T. Lander and Jalen Smith, at the, end of, uh, at the end of the day, whenever it's all said and done, will probably be the guys to push for, you know, the spot next to Keenan Pilly, or, you know, at least for that second group over a guy like Caleb Perry. I think that, realistically speaking, Caleb Perry and Elijah Herring will probably be in that third string along with a guy like Edwin Spillman. You know, I think that they'll all be fighting for more or less that third spot just because I feel like it's going to end up being Keenan Pilly next to Arian Carter, and then I think you've got Jeremiah T. Lander next to Jalen Smith. I think that that's the way that the first two groups are going to look. And you can maybe even interchange, uh, you know, any of those players. So those guys, you know, whenever we're talking about Caleb, uh, Caleb Perry and Herring probably won't see the field that much unless we go to a 4-3 base. And, uh, you know, I'd honestly, I mean, I would say that Edwin Spillman may even have a chance to pass those guys up. But again, we never know until those pads come on. So keep a close eye out on that. Now, on to the secondary, okay? From left to right, we've got Jamar McCoy and Ricky Gibson as the corners, Andre Turrentine. And I'm going to just assume that it's Will Brooks playing at safety. And I'm not sure if Jordan Thomas is playing at star or at safety in that lineup because he did move around, okay? We've heard that he's getting cross-trained at some different positions as well. And then for the second group, we've got Jalen McMurray, Jordan Matthews, John Slaughter, Kobe Thomas, and Boo Carter made it into that second group. That's, that's very interesting. And then the other notables were Christian Conyer, Caleb Beasley, Christian Harrison says he was playing star and Marcus Gorey also playing at cornerback. So obviously this is just very early on in spring practice. Will Brooks more than likely is not going to be starting at safety for us. Probably going to be Kobe Thomas at that position, but it looks like the staff is just trying to show, Hey man, these are the guys who know what to do. So they get to go out there first and just kind of teach y'all how to do it. And also don't, you know, we don't want y'all to get too overly confident, right? We don't want y'all to get overly confident and think, hey, we've made it and, you know, this is our position. You got to keep on working and that's all that this is. But I'll tell you, you know, whenever the season kicks off, I feel like it's going to be Kobe Thomas playing at safety. Now, who's going to be the other safety? Is it really going to be Andre Turrentine? Is it going to end up being Jordan Thomas? Who just talked about his moved around from safety to star. I think that he could play safety, but I may like him a little bit more at star because I don't know. Who do you want to put in there at star besides Jordan Thomas? For us, the star is what is called the nickel uh, in other uh, in other defenses. But, you know, it's out of our system. They're guys that can cover and that can also help in run support. So you want them to almost be like a linebacker safety hybrid. And that's where Jordan Thomas is. Reminds me a lot of what T-Mac was this past season, but I think that Jordan Thomas can actually give us a lot more in coverage. So that's where I want to see him at. But again, it's spring, so we're going to be moving people all over the place. Now, something else that really stood out to me uh, is that Boo Carter made it into that second group. That's really strong, okay? That means that he is being very impressive to be in the second group over guys like Christian Conyer, uh, you know, who's been here for some time. Uh, so that's very interesting. I think that Boo Carter does have a realistic shot to be in the two deep, either at star or at safety. Now, we've also got Jalen McMurray running with Jordan Matthews. I really want to see Jalen McMurray go to work. I want to see how he looks out there compared to the other players. So we'll see how all that plays out. I hope that Jordan Matthews takes a big step forward this season. He's got the length. He's got it. You know, he's got great footwork, great hips, everything that you would want. It sounds like he was struggling some this past season, but hopefully that light is turned on for him. 
and he can really help to contribute for this team moving forward. Uh, and then, you know, Caleb Beasley, we've kind of talked about him. Christian Harrison at the star position. I've also heard that he's been moving around, okay? I've heard that he's moved from star to safety. Where is he going to end up at? I really like him more at star, okay? I think that he could play more there. Realistically speaking, he could end up being number two right there behind Jordan Thomas. And that keeps him engaged. That will keep him around, uh, keep him from going to that transfer portal. So I'm hoping that, you know, he can kind of earn his stripes at that position. But, you know, like we keep on talking about, people are going to get moved all over the place. We'll keep on saying it throughout all of spring. We should be able to start to see it get more concrete, I would say, by like week three. People should pretty much be more or less practicing where the staff projects them to play in the fall. Now on to the quarterbacks. I think that Nico looked good, right? We heard Coach Heupel talking about this last season, that he doesn't make the same mistake twice. And now this season, one of the biggest talking points is how hard of a worker he is, how much work he's been putting in in the offseason. And he doesn't need to get motivated. He's a self-motivator. You have to have that at your quarterback position, especially for the starter. But he didn't make the same mistakes twice. We saw him in that pocket presence drill. Where he's keeping that ball up, keeping it, you know, tight to his body. His footwork looked good. Uh, you know, all the analysts have been raving about the way that he's throwing passes, right? There's so much zip. He's throwing 25, 30 yard passes that are getting there instantly. And it doesn't look as far as the pass actually is just because he has such a great touch. That's something else that I love. His ball is a soft, catchable football. And for anyone who's ever played ball, y'all understand what I'm talking about, right? Some quarterbacks can throw it hard. It gets there fast, but it's easier to catch. And I don't know how or why that is. It's something about the way that the ball comes out of their hand and how it spins. But Nico has that. So he's just a top of the line guy. I think that Jake Werklinger looked better. You know, the analyst said that he struggled in some rollout passes. I think that that's pretty normal. He's going to struggle as a true freshman coming into a college system. Although he did come in, uh, you know, back in bowl prep, but it's going to take him some time, right? I mean, that right there, really all of everything he's going through right now is going to be pretty much drinking through a, uh, you know, fire hose. So, He's going to get it down, Pat, but, you know, I love the way that he looks. I think that he looks the part of a quarterback. Gastamore continues to look how he has looked. He may look a little bit more sharp, a little bit more crisp, but we've got three guys in that room that can go. We didn't see much out of the running backs today, but I have kind of heard some of the analysts talking about uh, a guy like Cam Seldon looks dialed in. He looks very focused. He looks serious. He knows that this is a year that he will be in that three-back rotation, probably going to be running back number two. I realistically think that throughout the season – uh, him and Dylan Sampson may end up trading off as the starter at some point. I just feel like Cam Seldon gives you so much more with a bigger body, uh, not just from a running perspective, but also from a blocking perspective than Dylan Sampson will. But Dylan Sampson, you know, I've kind of counted him out before and he continues to prove me wrong. So I hope that he will continue to, uh, you know, do that throughout the entire season. But yeah, that I mean, that running back room is absolutely loaded. Now, tight ends, we didn't really get to, get to see them go. Uh, but it's going to be a really interesting battle. Ethan Davis and Holden stays. I hope that we will get to see more clips of them, especially once those pads come on, because I want to know, I want to see Ethan Davis proving to everyone that he can block. Um, and, you know, it, it'll be interesting for sure, just to see who ends up being the starter between him and Holden stays. Now on to the wide receivers. Really deep room. Uh, you know, I liked what I saw from Chris Brazel. Uh, earlier today, he most definitely did a much better job catching that football, caught it with his hands. He made it look easy, made it look effortless. Dante Thornton continues to look impressive. He looks dialed in. Braylon Staley, as a true freshman playing slot, he looks a lot like a bigger version of Squirrel White. I mean, he gets in and out of his breaks great, okay? Everyone's talking about how good his routes are. He's got really good hands. He's strong. He's tough. He's a little bit bigger than Squirrel is, but he may be just maybe like a shade, just a little taste slower than Squirrel. but. He's going to be very special, okay? He's got a long way to go, obviously, with us, but I do expect for him to probably be number two at the slot position. Mike Matthews, we've got to see him some. Continues to be a very smooth player. Um, you know, sounds like he did good in one-on-one today. He's got great hands. He's also tough. He's a really good blocker. Will he play slot or will he play more on the outside? I think he's more of an outside guy, but the thing about it is, you know, I just feel like he can play wherever we need him at the most. So, He'll be a guy that will continue to get cross-trained. I think that Caleb Webb looked really good today as well. He's taking another step forward. I mean, I'll, I could say the same thing about Chaz Nimrod, who I didn't get to see play today, but yesterday he just looked really good. But I would say that whereas last season I felt like uh, Chaz Nimrod was the better uh, between him and Caleb Webb, I think that Caleb Webb has really closed that gap. They may be looking at each other out of eye right now. 
And um, I mean, they're about the same size, six foot three, 200 pounds plus, and they can move. So, uh, you know, I love, I love the way that this offense looks. I love the way this entire team looks. We're deep everywhere. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no other position groups uh, that I need to talk about or that I can even think of. Obviously, we don't look at the specialists, which is the kickers and the punters, but that's going to be another question, something that I will be looking forward to seeing uh, or at least hearing about from the insiders to get to go up on practice and see those guys go to work. But yeah, man, I would say that day two overall, my biggest takeaway is I'm confirmed in how I felt from day one that this is a really good football team. There's a whole lot of talent. We're very deep pretty much everywhere, and there's a lot of different competition going on. Iron sharpens iron, and we, I think, made a good step from day one to day two, and I'm very interested and looking forward to seeing what day three looks like. I'm sure that y'all are as well, but thank you for sticking all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans, and we'll see y'all on the next one. Thanks. Peace.